Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and when we look at logos and art, we see the final piece. But that's just what it is, the final piece. But there's more than that. We never see the original sketches or the concept art. In this video, we're going to show you how to import a sketch, and with some advanced use of the pen tool, we're going to show you how to build a final logo. Here's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to import the sketch, We'll then use the pen and shape builder tools to create and refine the shapes. Finally, we're going to expand the shapes and then we're going to use the shape builder tool to create and color the fills. Piece of cake? For sure, but pay specific attention to how we use the pen tool. This will take your Illustrator game to a whole new level. In this video, we are going to learn the following You'll learn how to import art, you'll learn the advanced use of the pen tool. You'll also learn how to expand strokes into filled shapes. Finally, you're going to learn the basic and intermediate use of the Shape Builder tool. Again, I have talked way too much. Let's go. All right, well, let's get going with it. First thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, a single artboard, and if you scroll down, we'll be using the RGB color mode. Now, if we want to go to print, you can switch to the CMYK color mode. In this case, we're sticking to RGB. Let's go ahead and create. All right, the first thing I want to mention is that we are using the Essentials Classic Workspace. To switch to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go to Switch Workspace and select Essentials Classic. Now the reason why I use Essentials Classic is simply because it is the most user friendly for me. It's got the most windows and effects available for me to select from and it's right on screen. Next thing I wanna mention is that we're using Smart Guides to activate or enable Smart Guides. All you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides or Control U. Next thing I wanna mention is that we will be using the bottom center of the page to highlight hotkey and key command recommendations as well as tips and tricks. On that note, we are building our piece today using a PC. If you're on a Mac and we make any key command or hotkey recommendations using the control key, all you need to do is swap the command key in for that. With that being said, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we are going to import our sketched and photographed art. The way we do that is we go to File, place and then we'll select our artwork in this case it's called butterfly jpg click anywhere on our artboard and note straight away that our art is too big for our specific artboard so let's go ahead and double click on the scale tool and let's scale our piece down to 20 percent if we zoom out Note that our artwork is not close to our artboard, so we're going to fix that by aligning center horizontally and aligning center vertically, just like that. Now, if you don't see the Align window open, all you need to do is go to Window, Align, or Shift F7. Now that we've got that covered, let's go ahead and bring our artboard into full view. Next, let's go ahead and rotate our artwork 90 degrees. We do that by selecting our Rotate tool. We'll double click on that, enter in 90, click OK. Now that we've got that, and since this is our template piece, we won't need to be working on it or moving it. So let's lock it down into position by selecting Object, Lock, and Selection. You can also press Control 2 and it will lock down straight away. Now that we've got that covered, let's get to work. Let's go ahead and zoom into our piece just a little bit. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and grab our pen tool. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click anywhere on our piece, and then let's trace our piece around the outside. Let's go ahead and make our fill transparent so we won't have to worry about seeing it while we're drawing. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, please reference the video link on screen. Now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect our piece. 
that's a pretty good outline. That's a great start for now. So let's reselect it and let's go ahead and thicken our stroke. Note that when we thicken our stroke, it expands from the middle. That's not quite what we want. Instead, we want it to expand from the inside. The way we remedy this is let's go ahead and select our stroke window. You can click on your sidebar for that, or of course, you can go to Window, Stroke, or Control F10. Now, if you look at our stroke window, look down to about the bottom center and you'll see Align Stroke. If you click on the Align furthest right, you'll notice that it aligns to the outside. What we want to do is switch our align to the inside. Let's go ahead and do that by clicking on that. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and make our stroke thicker to fit the desired stroke thickness. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. Let's keep going with building out our stroke here. All right, the next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and draw our next stroke shape. The way we do that is we'll click anywhere on our existing stroke, and then we'll click on the next point over. That looks pretty good just about there. Once we've got that, let's drag our stroke out to the appropriate angle. I think that looks pretty fair just like that. And once we've done that, notice if we grab our selection tool that our stroke cannot be aligned to the inside or to the outside. The reason we can't do that is because it is not a closed shape. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the thickness until it occupies that entire shape that we want. Let's go ahead and deselect right there. That looks pretty good right there. All right, now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and draw a stroke on this top edge right here. Grab our pen tool once again. And we'll start on this edge right here. It doesn't matter how thick our stroke is. We'll click over here. And then we'll click back right over here. And what we want to do is drag a curve out that fits that curve that we've created. I think that looks pretty good right there. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to thin out our stroke until it does not overlap the line right there. I think that looks pretty good. Note that if we grab our selection tool and we zoom in, let's move closer to the center, that we've got this funky bump right here. We want to get rid of that. The way we do that is we're going to grab our direct selection tool. Let's click off of our stroke and then let's go ahead and click on our opening anchor point. What we're going to do is we're going to drag it over until it intersects that corner right there. I think that looks perfect. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect and let's bring the entire artboard into view to see what we've got to work with. All right, now that we've got those strokes done, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and keep playing with this. This is what we're going to do next. We're going to do this line by the wing. Notice that we're only working on one wing at a time. The reason is, is that since it's a symmetrical piece, we're going to focus on one wing. Once it's done, all we're going to do is we'll copy it, use the Reflect tool, and place it in the other side exactly where it needs to be. All right, let's continue with the bottom of our wing. We'll grab the Pen tool again, and here what we're going to do is we'll click on our bottom stroke, and then we'll go close to the top of our wing where our art dictates. We'll click it drag it out. That looks pretty good just about there. We'll release and let's zoom in just a little bit. Let's grab our selection tool and let's deselect. Note right now that on the sketch my stroke started thick and it ended thin. We can do that with our pen tool quite easily. All we need to do is select our stroke and then in our stroke window we can change the profile from uniform to width profile four. Notice how it starts thick and ends at a point. Let's go ahead and click on that. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's rotate down just a little bit. Notice, however, that our stroke at the base is way too thin. So let's go ahead and thicken that up. That looks good 
right there. Let's go ahead and deselect the stroke. And let's bring the entire artboard into view. Now we've got all of our stroke done on that wing. All we need to do now is add a bit stroke for the antenna. That's another step. So let's zoom into our shape one more time. Let's bring our antenna into center view, just like that. And then let's grab our pen tool once again. We'll click on this side. That looks good right there. And let's go out to about here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll click and drag about that far over. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and let's increase the width of our stroke until it meets what we are looking for. I think that thickness looks pretty good right there at nine points. Note, however, that we want our stroke to end with a round cap. That's easy enough. All we need to do is go to cap and then select round cap. Let's go ahead and deselect that. And that looks perfect. Now we've completed all of our stroke work for this piece. Let's go ahead and bring the entire artboard into view. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert our strokes into filled shapes. That way we can edit it most easily. Here's how we do that. What we're going to do is we're going to drag across and select all of our strokes. And let's go ahead and go to Object, Expand Appearance. This first move won't do anything, but it's going to set the precedent for us to be able to expand our strokes into filled shapes. Check it out. We'll click Expand Appearance. And notice that didn't do too much, so let's try one more time. This time around, we're going to select Object, Expand, and watch the pop-up window. Note that Fill and Stroke are selected. All you need to do is click OK and watch what happens. Note straight away, with our former strokes selected, that they are now all filled shapes. That's exactly what we want. The next thing we want to do is we want to merge those individual shapes together so we can start managing our shape. The way we do that is we go to Window, Pathfinder, or Shift Control F9. Once our Pathfinder window is up, all we need to do is go under Shape Modes and select Unite. Watch what happens. Note that all of the individual shapes are now one singular shape. Let's go ahead and keep our piece selected, and let's go ahead and get rid of the gap in our shape on top. Note right up here, we want a black filled shape instead of a hollow shape. Here's how we do that. We're going to go ahead and use the Shape Builder tool. We're going to select that, and with our piece still selected, we're going to hover over our shape, and we're going to drag over our black shape into this void right here. Watch what happens. I'm going to click and drag through, and it's going to create a united shape in that top area, just like that. It's exactly what we're looking to do. With that in mind, let's go ahead and deselect. And let's go ahead and click off of our shape. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and zoom into the butterfly wing because we want to take that bottom stroke, that bottom tapering stroke, and we want to convert it into a dotted line to resemble a road. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's zoom in once again. Let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool. And let's go ahead and just drag out rectangular blocks. We'll start big, like that, and then we'll work our way to a smaller taper. That looks pretty good right there. Do that another time right here. Slightly smaller taper. And then we'll go one more time up to the top and we'll drag across the top of our shape. And that looks pretty good right there. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead one more time, drag across our entire shape with the selection tool. And once again, let's go ahead and grab our shape builder tool. This time around, what we're going to do is we're going to create shapes that we can delete out of our rectangles that we just created. Check it out. We'll click across our topmost rectangle just like that, and we'll do it across our bottom rectangles as well. That's great. That's perfect. And one more time. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's click off of our shape, and let's go ahead and delete our rectangles. Watch what happens.
That looks perfect. That's exactly what we're looking to do right there. All right, now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and add new filled shapes where there is a void so we can add the color into our wing. The way we do that once again is we're going to drag across our shape. And let's grab the shape builder one more time. This time around, however, instead of dragging across multiple shapes, we're going to click on the areas where there is a shape void. What that's going to do is that's going to create a shape where there wasn't one. Check it out. We'll click here first, and then we'll do it again down here. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and deselect. Notice straight away that we've just got a black wing now. If we go to outlines, however, you can see that we've got all of the shapes there and existing. So how do we fix that? All we need to do is exit outlines. Let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool since all of these shapes are linked together. And we'll select our top most new shape. We'll hold our shift key to select multiple shapes and we'll select our bottom new shape as well. Now that we've selected those, all we need to do, double click on our fill. Let's change our fill color to orange. I think that looks pretty good right there. Click OK. Let's go ahead and deselect that shape. And that looks pretty good. Let's do one more thing now that we've done it. Let's go ahead and select the rest of our black shapes and drag them all the way down to full black. They're not quite there yet. The way we do that is with our direct selection tool selected, all we need to do is click on our antenna and then click the rest of our shapes, holding our shift key to select multiple shapes. That's what we wanted to do right there. Next thing we'll do is we'll double click on our black and let's drag that black all the way down to pure black or enter 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 for the hex code. There we go, let's click OK. That's better right there. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool deselect our shape. Now the only thing we're missing for this wing are the white circles. We can do this a couple of ways. One handy way to do it is by selecting our wing and then going over to our transparency window. We'll click on that. If you don't see that on your side window, all you need to do is go to Window, Transparency, or Shift Control F10. Once we've got that open, let's change the opacity to 30%. Note that once we've done that, you can see the sketch right below it. All we need to do now is grab our ellipse tool and draw out the three circles that we desire. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click our rectangle tool and we'll select our ellipse tool. And then let's click at the center of our largest circle. Let's go ahead and hold our shift and alt key. That'll expand our shape from the middle and keep it symmetrical and drag our shape out until it's just right. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and do it for our middle circle as well. Click, drag, hold our shift and alt key. That looks pretty good right there. And then once again for our smallest circle, again, we'll go to the middle of it. Click, drag, hold our shift and alt key. And that looks pretty good right there. That's our smallest circle. Next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and change the color of those circles. That's easy enough. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. We'll hold our shift key to select multiple circles just like that. And let's change our fill color to white. That's perfect right there. Let's click OK. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and select our wing one more time. We can just click on it. And let's change the opacity back from 30 to 100. Let's click OK. Let's deselect our shape. And that is exactly what we're looking for. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and group all of the elements for our wing. All we need to do now is click and drag across our wing and antenna. And then let's go Object, Group, or Control G. There we go. Now that it's been grouped together, all we need to do is create a copy of our wing and reflect it on the other side. Here's how we do that. We're going to click and hold our rotate tool and we'll select our reflect tool. Click there. Let's double click on the reflect tool. And let's make sure the vertical axis is selected and let's select copy. 
Now that we've done that, all we need to do is move our wing to the other side. The way we do that is we're going to hold our shift key and arrow to the left until our wing is in the right place. That looks pretty good right there. That's exactly what we're looking for. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect our piece. And all we need to do now is create the body. The way we do that is we'll continue with the ellipse tool. It doesn't need to be exact. And then we'll click around the middle of our shape. It does not need to be perfect. That looks pretty good right there. Next thing we're going to do is we'll click and start dragging out. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and press our Alt key. That will allow it to expand from center. And let's go ahead and drag it out until it's more or less the right size. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and arrow it down. And that looks pretty tight right there. Now to move our shape to exactly the right place, Let's go ahead and go to outlines and let's zoom into the center to make sure our piece is exactly aligned. What if we key to the left once? It's not quite there. So let's zoom in and let's go ahead and just grab our selection tool and drag it to the right just a little bit until it is exactly center. I think that is pretty close to right right there. Let's release. Let's bring our entire artboard into view. Let's exit outlines. And all we need to do now is change the color of our body to black. Let's double click on our fill, drag it down to black, just like that. We'll click OK. And then let's bring the body back behind the wings. Here's how we do that. All we need to do is right click on our body, select Arrange, Send Backward, or Control Left Bracket. That's a step in the right direction. Let's do it one more time. We'll press control left bracket until it is in the right place. That looks perfect to me. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Next thing we need to do, let's go ahead and unlock all of our locked elements. The only locked element, of course, is the sketch. So we'll select object, unlock all. Note that our sketch is editable now. So let's deselect everything. And then let's go ahead once again and select our sketch. We'll select Backspace or Delete and go ahead and delete it. Note that our butterfly is done and looks pretty fresh. What we're going to do now is let's drag across our entire shape just like that. Let's go back to Object. Let's group it. And then let's align it center horizontally and vertically. Let's deselect our shape and we are done. All right, one quick note. Be sure that you are loyal to your final vision not to your sketch. If you're loyal to your sketch, you'll find that it holds back your final look. With that in mind, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. I'd appreciate it just a little bit more if you subscribed. We'll see you next time. Peace. <music>